Good luck. Merhaba arkadaşlar. Hepiniz Ayıf Detoks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Londra'nın kalbinde University of Westminster'da yüksek lisans programları ve burs fırsatlarını Emily, Joanne, Ayaz ve Gina ve Adel'den dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes Emily, the stage is yours now. Thanks very much and thank you for everybody for joining us today. Uh, we're delighted to be with you on the IFT uh, Talks webinar. Today we're going to be talking about some of our postgraduate courses within our Department of Life Sciences. So we're going to be covering biomedical science, sports and exercise nutrition and global public health. Obviously, COVID has made uh, has made these subjects incredibly important and we've seen lots of news items about subjects allied to medicine. So we're delighted today to be able to give you more details of the courses that we have at the University of Westminster. I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Joan. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Joan Liu, and I'm a senior lecturer in cellular pathology. Um, and today I'm going to talk to you about um, the excellent range of postgraduate courses that we offer at the Westminster University of Westminster. So hopefully you can see my slide now. So in the School of Life Sciences, we offer masters in applied biotechnology and also masters in biomedical science and particularly in this course you can choose which discipline of biomedical science or pathways you would like your degree to be awarded in you can choose to specialize in cancer biology cellular pathology clinical biochemistry hematology immunology medical microbiology medical molecular biology we are also offering a new master course in integrative health and well-being. This is a fantastic and interesting module, particularly relevant to our society today, which will teach and encourage students to explore, critique and generate transformative solutions to address challenges in health and well-being. And finally, my excellent colleagues, uh, Regina and Azad, are here today to present our very popular and innovative master courses in global public health nutrition and sports and exercise nutrition. I will now talk more in, about the uh, masters in biomedical science. This course has been designed to nurture and equip our students with essential knowledge and understanding, skills and experience so that students who graduate with our degree can become professionals capable of making important contributions to the bioscience sector, as well as delivering efficient and effective health care. During your um, degree, students will learn about diagnostic science, um, how science is used to assist in the diagnosis, classification, prognosis and predictive testing for various pathological conditions. Much of the latest development in diagnostic science is driven by research um, and also advanced modern technology. So research and theory and clinical application of these technologies will also be covered in our courses. Um, our students have the opportunity to undertake research projects under the supervision of our excellent and friendly teaching academics who are also expert researchers in the various fields within the biomedical science. And through the research project, you'll learn technical skills in our labs, equipped with um, modern equipment, as well as skills in data, statistic and image analysis and bioinformatics. Students will also learn how to um, critique evaluate past literatures as well as their own work. Our teaching teams encourage our students to present um, their research findings as oral presentations in school-wide meetings and um, national and international conferences and also as written forms in forms of dissertations and publications. Um, at the University of Westminster we offer pastoral care and English support to our international students. We have international students from over 160 different countries so you will not be alone and our university welcome diversity and the vibrant cultures that our international students bring to our university. We would welcome you to look at our international student blog website to see how current international students have enjoyed their lives in UK and their learning experience at the University of Westminster. 
Our Masters in Biomedical Science is internationally recognised and is a transferable qualification. And our course is accredited by the Institute of Biomedical Science, and this is a professional, professional bodies for our biomedical sciences in the UK. We have uh, different course leaders dedicated to each pathways so that they can focus on the cohort of students and provide the best teaching and support for our students. We generally have about 100 students on our uh, Masters in Biomedical Science programme and each pathway has around 10 to 20 students. So small group teaching and support is also available and possible. To graduate from our master's course, you will need to acquire 180 credits, and this is made out of uh, 60 credits from the pathway core modules, where you will gain essential knowledge about your specialized pathways, plus 60 credits from optional modules, and you can choose from over 20 options, and I've listed some preferred ones here. And finally, 60 credits from modules related to your research project. We have modern, refreshing lecture halls, classrooms, computer and practical labs that are creatively organized and equipped with modern technology to allow interactive, engaging styles of teaching. We have online Blackboard learning environment where students can access teaching notes and lecture recordings in their own time. Our cellular pathology students have access to our digital slide viewer platform so that they can view human and animal tissue online. Our mode of assessment are variable, ranging from MCQs, coursework portfolios, um, essays and oral presentations are some of the examples. Our graduates are employable straight away. Previously, our um, graduates have gained employment in diagnostic pathology labs, universities, research institutions. Some have become technologists and product specialists in pharmaceutical and biotech uh, industries. We also have graduates that continue to pursue further education in form of PhDs or MBAs to further enhance their career prospect. We welcome potential students with a good science degree with at least second class honours award or equivalent and those with relevant work experience will also be considered. We would suggest um, our potential applicants to consider the application carefully, particularly their personal statements. And if you have any question at all, please feel free to email our course leaders who would be very help, uh, happy to answer any of your questions and their emails are found here. Thank you very much for your attention and I would now pass on um, the presentation to my colleague uh, Regina who is the course leader for Masters in Global Public Nutrition uh, for her to introduce her course. Thank you very much. Thanks very much Joan. So good afternoon everybody and thank you for taking time to come and talk with all of us today. Um, today I'm going to talk to you about our Masters in Global Public Health Nutrition. We are um, credited with the Association for Nutrition so that once you finish your degree with us, which you can do um, over one year as an international student, um, you can then apply for an associate nutritionist with the Association for Nutrition or um, if you have experience you can go for a full nutrition um, qualification. Some things that people are usually not aware of um, is the difference between dietitians and nutritionists. So basically, um, dietitians are usually clinical, often based in a hospital or a clinic setting, whereas nutritionists are focusing on population health. Um, and as you know, in the, the context of COVID, this is something that is increasingly important. Um, I would have to say certain countries in the world are much better and much more advanced in their understanding of the importance of population health. But I think in relation to COVID, um, it has done a lot of understanding of the importance of nutrition in relation to health. And I think that um, the other thing to recognize is that this year, even though a lot of people have become aware of the correlation between health and nutrition, um, the importance of food security is another thing that we cover a lot in our in our program. Um, this has become very much aware in relation to um, the global nutrition context. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, who am I? Uh, I'm the course leader for the department. Um, 
we have a very interesting and diverse team. Um, I myself have worked in the field of health for about 38, 39 years now, um, working in international development in 30, between 56, lived in 30 countries and, and worked in 56 countries. Um, in the area of public health, uh, places like Africa, Asia, Latin and Central America. I've worked with NGOs, with the NHS, with groups like Save the Children, Action Against Hunger. So a lot of those agencies we still have very close relationships with. We have um, a small core team um, that teach. So we've got Jessica, who is our dietitian and is still working with um, in the NHS. Claire Robertson's our epidemiologist, who's in the front there. Um, we've got Teddy Siam, who is a Ethiopian, French, uh, and Italian uh, nutritionist. Santhi has just joined us from Greece, um, who is another nutritionist and myself. So we are a small team, but we have a lot of experiences. We have lots of team members um, in the sports. We share four of our modules with the sports exercise and nutrition team and I'll come a bit more a bit to that in a minute. So why should you even consider doing Global Pub? Well, you must be thinking of doing something in this area of science if you're coming to this talk today. So first of all, we are um, a very strong component of health as a human right and nutrition is also a fundamental right. The right to food and the right to health are core components of our modules and our um, are how we actually approach health. We very much look at the policies of the Alma Ata, which was created in 1978, and then again espoused um, and, and supported by global uh, global leaders in 193 countries uh, in, 19, in 2018. So, basically showing that health and nutrition are co-linked and if we don't in if we don't invest in health and we don't invest in nutrition as we've seen again in covid um then we are not going to have a future because basically um we're going to have a, a society that is not able to function if they're not healthy and they're not nourished well um and this is the two sides of that is really important with this in this degree. So this, when I say the two sides I'm talking about the fact that there is an intergenerational uh, issue. So therefore, how we feed our children affects whether or not those children are healthy in later life. Um, if you feed your child, whether you're breastfed or we know that if you breastfed children, for example, 823,000 children would not die every year. And what we feed our children, even if how we're delivering our children, could actually affect um, whether or not they are obese in later life. So that correlation between the generations, how a mother is, how healthy a mother is when she's pregnant, does affect the nutrition. We also have um, the other aspects is how healthy we are as teenagers affect us later on in life. So this intergenerational quality, in fact, we know that if you invest in nutrition, one dollar of investment into nutrition could reap between 18 and 33 dollars into our national economies. So it is a very cost effective inter uh, intervention. Um, so the economic benefits of nutrition cannot be under cannot be underestimated in relation to the second thing that we do very differently at this degree. We're one of the only courses that actually look at nutrition in its full realm. So we looked at malnutrition in all three of its contexts. We look at undernutrition, and um, we look at the forms and the causes of that. We look at hidden hunger or micronutrient deficiency, and we look at obesity. So we look at all three um, forms of malnutrition. Again, as I said, there's 27 other universities in the UK, but we are the only one with a global um, remit and focusing on those three aspects um, in entirety. So you can choose once you qualify from our course, you will be able to go and work in any three of these areas. But you can, of course, focus on the area that interests you more. So you can focus your assessments on obesity if that's what interests you, if you're interested in iodine deficiency, if you're interested in anemia, if you're interested in hunger, any of those areas of malnutrition, you can focus on them. Um, the other thing, because even if we're in the middle of COVID, being based in London, we have this access, as Joan said, we have many, many international participants in our degree. In our course this year, we have 63 students. And of those 63, 75% of our students are from over from different countries. This year, we have 26 countries represented on our course. So the learning you can have from each of you, this year we have three students from Turkey, in fact. 
So you learn from each other. You learn from the experience you all bring. You've all lived a life coming to this course. And we really harness the fact that you come to this course with your own understanding of life. You've all lived a life. You've all had to experience health. You've all had to experience nutrition. So we bring your context into your world because if you don't understand the application of knowledge and theory, you're not going to be a good nutritionist. So it really is moving from that theory into action. Um, the other thing that we have unique to other universities is we run every summer a nutrition and emergency short course, which other people can come and buy. Um, but as students on the course, you can either take as a module or you can take part in. And um, as I said, many, you get to have people, we have uh, over the years, we have people like the head of nutrition for Nigeria, the head of nutrition from Pakistan, different countries around the world will attend and send people on that course. It's a one week course, it's intensive. And in fact, if you're not sure if you really wanna do the course, if you're not sure if nutrition is for you, you can always join this course in the summer. It runs this year in the third summer, third week of, of June. You can just take that course and see if nutrition is for you. Um, the other thing that we do, again, which is unique to most other um, organizations in the UK, we have an open access course. So for example, you might come from marketing, maybe you come from finance, and you think, my life is not where I want to be. I want to change. So we recognize this. We recognize that people want to have a change in a career. If this is you, if this actually is you and you don't have an undernutrition degree, don't worry. We have an essentials of nutrition degree. So as long as you have a degree, um, at an honors degree at lower at a undergrad level you can take this essentials of nutrition online course if you go to our website and you get the essentials of nutrition professional short courses it costs 500 pounds you can take that if you if there's four modules um, the modules include things like macronutrients micronutrients digestion absorption metabolism public health and um, nutrients and basically if you pass those online you can take around four months to a year to do that if you want um, you pass that then you're 500 pounds when you join our masters either the global public health nutrition or the sports exercise nutrition which is is going to come and talk to you in a minute about you can have, then have that 500 pounds um, taken off of your degree so again these are really very strong points that are helping you towards your career your next section of your career if you're looking at the other thing we were talking about, about why should you be thinking about doing nutrition? Well, we're right smack in the middle of the decade of nutrition. All right. Ten years is we're about five years ago, the UN Secretary General recognized that health was something that was really important, that nutrition was responsible or malnutrition was responsible for over 50% of the deaths globally. And therefore, they needed to be addressing hunger, especially because we weren't making progress in it in the way we should have been doing. So he created the decade of nutrition. And there's six basic targets that were set globally to be achieved by 2025. Things like reducing the number of children who are chronically malnourished or stunted, increasing the number of women who are breastfeeding their children, reducing childhood obesity, reducing the number of children that are born too small for their weight, reducing the number of women that are um, anemic or, you know, so there's a number of targets that were set. So right now is a brilliant time to become into the world of nutrition because the world is recognizing a lot of people, countries have targets that they're not meeting. In fact, only two countries, and if I ask you all to type in there, only two countries, in fact, one country now, only one country is on track for all of these targets. If you can type in there, which one of you think what that country would be? Who do you think is on track for all of these targets? Type in there and I bet you nobody will get the answer correct. Um, I'll give the answer in a minute, but who do you think is on track in the decade of nutrition for achieving um, all of the uh, nutrition targets? Um, I'm not seeing anybody type, but if, if some of you can type in, you can see, and I'll come back to the answer for that. Um, no one's ans no one's typing anything just now, but just to come view, you probably wouldn't have guessed it, but Kenya. Kenya is the only country in sub-Saharan Africa that's on track to achieve these targets. Um, so again, it's not our normal consideration. So how are we going to get you to where you're going? So what would you be studying if you come on to this degree? We have a number of modules. As I said, there's four of them in semester one and four of them in semester two. Four of our modules are going to be shared with sports exercise nutritionist master's students. Ayaz will tell you about his degree in a minute. But the first semester, you're going to be going over the concepts and the principles of nutrition. So you'll be looking at that met metabolism, digestion, absorption. It's the nutrition science. We're going to be looking at 
Well, if you if you are vitamin D deficient, we know how important vitamin D is now for COVID. But if you take a vitamin D supplement with coffee, it actually stops the absorption. So it really gives you some really good things of heavy. These are the kind of principles of nutrition. What do we need to know? And then we move into more the correlation between nutrition and disease. We know that certain things that we eat, if we don't eat healthily, it can lead us to be more likely to become diabetics, or we might also have heart disease if we don't eat healthily. So what are the other things? Well, we know that we can easily eat to make ourselves healthy. We can eat good foods that can help us with our mental health. So the whole relationship between public health, diet and disease, and human and health systems is another one of our modules. We look at policies and governance. We look at about what is important. What policies do we have for health and nutrition? Why are they not being, you know, in the UK, we have a policy on obesity, but it's not working. Why? We look at the problems and we help you to overcome them so that you might want to follow up a career in policy. We look at research methods where you get to learn about how do you can data analyze data. We want to be looking at things like analyzing papers. How do you read papers? How do you actually create um, reports in relation to analyzing information? And all of that is your first semester. We look at semester two that you're looking at a wider group of things. Now we're moving from our theories more into our applications. So we look at global challenges, climate change. How is climate change affecting the food system? How do we actually assess food insecurity? We also look at the factors of plastics. What does plastics in our foods do to us? Um, what about food waste? Every 40% of our food, we waste it. And yet we have over 800 million people going to bed hungry we get you to grapple with those big system issues. What is the solution? This is one of your assessments. Come up with a policy brief. How are you gonna change the world? Come up with some solutions. This could be your future. What about nutritional assessment? Now we're getting back into the bones and the nuts and bolts of being a nutritionist. How do you actually measure somebody, a population? So you're not just having to learn how to assess a, an individual's assessment of nutrition health, but you want to look at the population. How do you do population surveys? How do you do nutritional assessments for individuals? This one we'll be sharing with the sports exercise nutritionist. So you'll learn about individual and population nutritional assessments in this module. You'll have to do a portfolio and a magazine article. So we have very different kinds of assessments. Now we're going into a more nuts and bolts of what a nutritionist might be. You have to actually create um, an intervention. So your nutrition interventions and program planning, we're going to look at what works to improve nutrition and health. And we'll get you then part of your assessments for this is to create a nutrition program. Interestingly, over 20 of our students in the last few years have actually got their proposals funded and they are actually working on the proposals that they created when they were a student, which shows us that not only is are you learning on this course, but you're actually taking forward the learning, and which we're very proud of. Last year, we were voted, according to the University of Westminster, our students put us forward for the Westminster Champions Award, and we won the award for the whole university um, in relation to employability. So we have very strong links to the um, employability field, both in the UK and globally. We have very strong links at getting you um, both experience at, um, we have lots of volunteer positions when you're in doing your masters, and then we have lots of students who um, are alumni that come and talk to you and then we have internships that after you finish that you can go into various different areas as long as you put and this is something I always tell you you're not going to be handed something without the hard work if you're willing to come on our course and work hard I expect a hundred percent you give a hundred percent you're going to get it back so it's all about what you put into this course the final module of the degree is your thesis it is worth you know a large portion it's 40 credits and this is where you get to be who you want to be what is it really what is that question that you're really interested in are you interested in diabetes are you interested in hunger are you interested in crickets what is it you're interested in? You can do, you can choose your research. We have a number of students, Not you're not just re, um, looking at just the four or five of us that are working on the core team. You can look at many of our team members to supervise you on your research. You can do qualitative, quantitative, mixed methods. It's up to you. 
So those are, that's your module of kind of what you will be doing. As I said, we've got very diverse kinds of assessments where you might be creating a poster with um, some of your classmates on the relationship between what you eat and sort of things with Alzheimer's. Or you might have to do a health systems analysis, looking at your country of Turkey. How is, how is nutrition and health being affected in Turkey? How do you pay for health care in Turkey? Do you have enough access to health when you need it? So you do a health systems analysis. You do a policy analysis. You choose a policy yourself and you actually analyze it. You do a policy briefing. What kind of things do you think are going to change health and nutrition? You do things like critical reviews. You read papers. You learn how to critically analyze scientific literature. You look at data analysis. You also learn how to become a reflective pract practitioner. So science is all about a combination of qual and quantitative skills. You need to have to understand the depth of why things happen, not just how and when. So we tell you how you can actually become a better nutritionist, a better practitioner. So we're really strong of trying to ensure that you're achieving those things. Um, as Joan mentioned, the similar kind of entry requirements in having an honors degree. If England is not your second language, they'll talk to you a little bit later about your eyelets. Um, but as I said, you can apply at the same time for your essential nutrition course if you do not have science as an undergrad degree. This is a group here on your right hand side of students that took um, a mixture of our students and the students that came on board to do the short course of nutrition and emergencies. The fact that we have these two short courses can certainly help. And if you think, will I be able, we had a girl a few years ago who came on to um, the Essentials of Nutrition course. She had been working in finance for a couple of decades and she did her degree. Um, and after she did, she, she scored a distinction on her degree. And afterwards, she went to work for Save the Children and helped them to create an app to cost a diet because she had banking skills. She had finance skills. So she was able to work with Save the Children to create an app that's now being used by Save the Children and World Food Program. So you come in with lots of diverse skills. Never underestimate the power of your own skills. If you're looking at where this course can take you, I've already talked to you a little bit about the fact that you might be interested in policies, but maybe you want to work with young children. You might want to work in the field of maternal and child health. Maybe you'll want to work with ministers of health around the world in international development. Maybe you'll want to be doing research. This is a group of us that I took 11, 10 students to Ethiopia. We were doing work on severe acute malnutrition for a couple of years. So they did, these 10 students did their projects with me in Ethiopia. You might be interested in breastfeeding. How come if 823,000 children's lives could be saved by breastfeeding, why are only 34% of women doing this? Why are we not doing that? What's the importance of actually knowing what a day in a life of a health worker is? This is a participatory learning and action tool that we do in some of our participation. So you might actually want to work at community nutrition work. You might want to work in community health. You might want to work with um, policies in relation to public health England. You might want to work with your ministries of health. You might want to work with academia. Many of our students go on to do PhDs and further their research. Um, they might want to work specifically with research. There's a lot of research going on right now in relation to obesity or relation to how we're going to address food system challenges. Um, there's other private public partnerships like GAIN and the SUN initiative. In fact, um, SUN, which is the Scaling Up Nutrition, has joined now with um, the Standing Committee on Nutrition to set up the United Nations Nutrition. We finally have a UN body that is actually focusing on nutrition. So you can work in any of the UN bodies like WHO, FAO, UNICEF. The, the course will enter you or give you the capacity to do all of that. The other group that you can work with are other industries like Kerrygold. We have relationships with some um, groups like health food shops and supermarkets, Waitrose, other places have hired nutritionists. Schools have hired nutritionists to work with them. We've been working with Tower Hamlets and a number of other boroughs in the UK. Um, organizations like uh, Henry, which are weight loss or child obesity programs, um, holiday food and security programs. Um, in relation to COVID, we have a lot of our students who are working in the area of food security in the relation to how do we actually address. So this is one of our students, Kate, who graduated. Um, last two years ago, Kate won our first Alma Ata Award, which is a right to health award. And she looked at food sovereignty and she's now working um, she came in and she was already a dietitian, and she then um, 
her actually she won the award the alma first alma auto award she went right after she graduated to work with um the neglected tropical diseases with liverpool school of tropical health and she also had her thesis accepted at the world public health nutrition conference um and she's now working at uh, in the borough in london on food insecurity tandy is one of our graduates from malawi when she came to us um she did her research in anemia and she went back to malawi and was working in maternal and child health. Um, Charmaine is from America. She's one of our graduates. When she was working, she was a part-time student and she um, did her degree over two years. She was working in a borough on um, micronutrient deficiencies in one of the London boroughs. And then when she graduated, she went back home to New York. And for the last year, she's been working as the COVID response um, coordinator on food security in New York. So there's very diverse jobs that you can do in relation to global public health. Um, it is an interesting, you'll certainly never be bored. And if you're willing and interested in the area of public health nutrition, it certainly is, um, there's lots happening in this field right now, specifically as COVID has shown and highlighted the real importance of global health and nutrition. So that's whetted your appetite, I hopefully, for the areas of public health and nutrition. And now I'm going to hand you over to my colleague, to Ayaz, who is going to speak to you about our other nutrition degree, which is the sports exercise and nutrition. Ayaz? Thank you, Regina. It was really insightful. Hi, everyone, and welcome let me just get my hands around. So welcome to the University of Westminster, Sport and Exercise Nutrition. Uh, so just before I start, um, I'm the course co-leader for the MSc. And as my colleague Regina has gave you a lot of information about what our courses offer and how we work integratingly uh, together in different courses. So here, what I would do, I'll give you a brief summary of uh, what our courses, uh, what our sport and exercise nutrition give you um, the opportunities that provide. So in this picture, what you see is you see an athlete on a treadmill conducting a VO2 max uh, and the students are leading it. So what we have for you and our course is a hands-on opportunities, practical opportunities, as well as the theory. So we teach you the theory and then you apply it into the practice. Our course MEC is one of the fewest, um, a few courses here in the UK that's accredited across uh, different uh, boards. For example, the SENR, uh, it's accredited by that, AFN and ISSN, which is an international body. So what this allows you, it allows you the flexibility to either become, for example, a dietitian, a nutritionist, a sport and exercise nutritionist as well. So it gives you the flexibility to work in different environments. So, as I mentioned, we focused on the analytical and practical approach. So what you, what happens is you have a pro we give you a problem, a scenario, a problem, and then we also teach you how to. Uh, solve the problem uh, practically by attempting uh, attempting and working in the lab or working in the field or, uh, or in a class or lecture theatre to practically solve the problem. Also, uh, through our course, uh, it will improve your understanding and provide nutritional support for participants with a wide range of sports and exercise. And one thing that is important to mention, uh, when we when you hear the word sport and exercise, this MSc course will not only lead you to work with athlete sport, but it will also lead you to work with the other sectors as well. You can become a, clini a clinical uh, scientist, you can work as a nutritionist, uh, as a dietitian, it leads you as well to, with the public engagement as well. So it gives you a lot of opportunities to go and, and work after you graduate. So also, uh, the course gives you the opportunity to be proactive, uh, to play a proactive role in the research as well. Uh, as Regina mentioned, one of our uh, module to, at the end of uh, the, the thesis, end of the MSc program is a dissertation module where you would have the opportunity to develop your own research, your own question, and we will supervise you with the expertise. Uh, and, and we'll support you throughout. And that will really give you the opportunity to become who you really want to become. If 
for some reason I can't see all of the slides. I'm not sure why. We can see them. You're we're, you're able we're able to see them. Okay, so I'm just that's better now. I can see. Um, also, the the sport and uh, and exercise nutrition course provide you a practical and realistic solution which enable you to work if if you choose to work with any athletes so you can work with them improve their performance as well as working with uh, other sectors so here what you see is the underlying nutrition concepts that we cover in the course uh, are the use of nutrition information comparative values population norms and determine basic healthy physiological functions and the fundamental scientific principles that we cover are nutrients key substrates metabolism digestion and absor absorption and most of the things here that regina has spoken about and explained it in detail so uh, again we cover a range of aspects and we have modules that are shared in in with other courses uh, at Westminster as well. So again, you have the flexibility to in this course. The performance nutrition after graduating from this course, again, if you choose, like I mentioned, if you choose to go work with the elite athletes, you can do. But often what happens if you hear the word sport and exercise science, all of a sudden people think this is all about sport. Again, it's not just about sport, but the course, this MSc course do provide you the opportunity to go and work in with athletes should you wish to. Uh, you can work with them as a nutritionist. Uh, you can look at the practical consideration and challenges and what you can do. But in addition to that, exercise nutrition for health as Regina mentioned about COVID, about health, well-being, and etc. So again, if you look at the B obesity, the diabetes, the coronary heart diseases, and etc., all of the health issues across the globe that's rapidly increasing. So again, you can play a role in working uh, with people in a public health sector uh, and, and changing their behavior as well. So it can lead you to become exercise sport and exercise physiologists, nutritionists, psychologists. So a lot of people know, know that certain type of eating or exercise or not exercising is bad for them, but they don't know how to study. They don't know how to stick to it. So again, here you will have the opportunity and you'll have the expertise to lead those people and change their behavior for better. The MSc course here, uh, if you look at the picture, it provides you an opportunity to be the scientist, work in a lab, in a clinic. It provides you the opportunity to be an engineer. So what happens here, you, you as the engineer, you get the data, you get the problem and you find the solution for it. And you're helping people generally and also more specifically with one-to-one -one as well. And you become the coach. So what, what the coach does is it helps people lose weight, for example, or up to, uh, maintain their health and well-being or achieve their performance. So you have a, a range of flexible opportunities after completing this course. Now, who chooses to study with us at this course? A scientist who wants to specialize in the field of sport and exercise and develop and applied scientific skills, a coach who wants to develop their evidence-based practice and problem-solving skills with nutritional science, and a career change to follow your passion. Like my colleague mentioned, if you did something that you in previously a degree and now you don't like to go work in that field or you're thinking this is not for you, then the MSc Sport and Exercise Nutrition uh, course is for you. And, and we will give you the opportunity to, to have that career change, follow your passion and do something that you always wanted to do. Entry requirement, uh, a minimum 
two, uh, two, two in a life science subject with a string element of nutrition or physiology. However, as uh, my colleague explained, if you don't have that life science degree, then we do have a essential of nutrition access online courses for non-life science graduates. You can, um, again, enroll onto that course. And, and after that, then you can apply for the MSc Sport and Exercise Nutrition. And I let 6.5 average, and I think my colleague will explain uh, this bit more broadly. If you have a further question, or if you want more information, the email address, um, you can contact us, you can contact Sanjoy, who is the course leader, or you can contact myself and as the course school leader, on a.safi at westminster.ac.uk. Uh, so that's some information there. To conclude here, if you want or more in, or, or if you want more information about the course and, and what I've just said here, don't take my words for it. So what you can do, scan QR code or click on the link, watch and listen that around two minutes video and listen from the students and what the course is, what the university offer to you and what our students are saying about the course. Thank you. Emily, you are mute, I think. Apologies. Thank you so much, Ayaz. Um, thank you, Regina. Thank you, Joan, for those presentations. Hopefully that's given you a, a really nice flavour of some of the, the postgraduate courses we offer at the University of Westminster. Um, I'm going to talk to you now just about some of the practical elements. So how to make an application, some of the English language requirements. Uh, we've had quite a lot of questions in the, in the chat as well about scholarships, about the opportunities for employment after you finish your course. So hopefully I will be able to talk through some of those areas for you. In terms of the application, it's very straightforward. There is no application fee. You apply directly to the university via the course play page. Um, there is an apply now button on the course page. You click through to that. What you will need to include is uh, copies of your education history. So that's your transcripts. If you do have a resume or curriculum vitae, then you can upload that. Um, and we will also need a personal statement. The personal statement is very important because it tells us about your background, it tells us your motivation to study the course, um, and it gives us a much more holistic picture of you as a student rather than just your transcripts. We also ask for a reference, an academic reference, for students that have been uh, working for a a considerable amount of time, which is often the case for postgraduate students, you can provide us with a professional work reference. Um, we will also require English language certificates. So we um, require IELTS 6.5 with a minimum of six in writing for the three courses that we have presented today. Some of our other postgraduate courses have slightly different entry requirements. And some of you have been asking about undergraduate programs, which ask for IELTS. 6.0. Um, we really accept a very wide range of qualifications, so we will accept a degree from most Turkish universities. The GPA that we are looking for does vary depending on the institution in Turkey, or some of you may have studied in, in Germany or other parts of the European Union or the US. Um, we have a different country page for, for each area of the world, and they will tell you what the specific entry requirements are for that country. But we really accept students from a very broad range of different backgrounds. As I mentioned, IELTS 6.5, Again, we also recognize Duolingo, we recognize TOEFL, uh, Pearson's. So we, we recognize a broad range of English language qualifications for entry. So the fees for the course, 
I think as, as we saw in those presentations, one really important thing to remember about UK master's programs is that they are one year. So they are only one year compared to the US, compared to Australia, compared to Germany. That means that overall, the costs to the student will be lower because it's a much more condensed program. Um, the programs that we have presented today, their overseas fees are 14,000. So that is for the full course. For other subjects that you may be interested in, um, there are different fees. So you need to look at the course page and that will specify the exact fee for that course. In terms of living costs, again, this is very important area. In order to be eligible for your UK student visa, you need to demonstrate that you have £1,265 for each month that you will be in the UK. So master's is 12 months um, and that, that needs to be in your bank account 28 days before you make your visa application. Scholarships, again, I know this is a very, very important subject. Um, we find that the British Council have an excellent website where they list a range of different scholarships. So this is external scholarships that may be offered by um, organisations within Turkey. Uh, some of the different ministries in Turkey I know provide a lot of scholarships, um, links to um, things like the Jean Monnet or Chevening scholarships. In terms of Westminster's own scholarship offering, we have uh, tuition fee scholarships of £2,000. Those are open to all subject areas and all students. The criteria are that you must have an offer at the university, so you must have an offer on one of our courses, um, and you must have the equivalent of a UK 2-1 or above. Um, if you have any queries about what that equivalent is, I'm very happy to answer those and I will provide my email at the end. Um, I've given you the web address there for the fees, the fees and the funding site. Deadline for the scholarship applications is June the 14th. As I say, those are open to all international postgraduate students. So another important change this year is the announcement that we now have the new graduate immigration route. The graduate immigration route allows anybody who successfully graduates from the UK to stay for up to two years. Um, that can be working in any sector. So it really doesn't limit students to working in, in a job which is directly linked to their graduate program. It can be working anywhere in the UK. Um, and I think it's also very important to note that the university has a very, very extensive careers and employment service that are there to help students to find those postgraduate and graduate work opportunities. In terms of working during your studies, you are able to work 20 hours per week in the term time and 40 hours during the holiday time. The university has a range of different employment options. So we have a, a scheme called Talent Bank, where we employ students to do work around the university. We have a student ambassador program where students are paid an hourly rate uh, to, to talk to other students, to provide campus talks and to work with us. Um, in addition to that, the University Careers Service have a jobs board where they advertise a wide range of part-time and graduate work opportunities. I think you will see from the from the presentations you've had today, Westminster has a very, very strong focus on employment, on employability, in training graduates to go into the workplace. So a key focus of the, the curriculum that we have is to make sure that our students are ready for the workplace. And that's a that's a very important aspect to all of the study programs that we have. Student accommodation, so we do have a range of student halls of residence. I'm not going to go into too many details, but just to give you an idea, these are generally single study rooms with ensuite uh, bathrooms, and then they have shared kitchen and dining facilities, um, and they all have 24 hour security, uh, broadband, and they, have, um, uh, they are based in different locations in London, so we have different halls of residence for different types of students. So some are for postgraduate, some for undergraduate, and it depends where you will be studying your courses. Once you make an application to the university and you have an offer, then you can apply for a place in our halls of residence. 
So really just to finish this session to say, what are the next steps? How can you take this forward? So I think it's really, really important for all of you to explore what the different course options there are, um, to have a look at the course pages, really have a look in depth at the program, make sure that you understand what the, what the program is about. We are very, very happy to answer any questions that you might have about those programs. I can provide contact details. We also have the open day coming up on the 2nd of June, where again, then you can get uh, more details about a broad range, so all of our postgraduate courses. So if you joined us today, but perhaps you're thinking of a different subject area, then please do have a look at our website or join us on the 2nd of June. Um, my email address is on screen, so I'm very happy to help any students that have any particular queries. And we also work with a very broad range of education agents in Turkey. So we work with uh, Educas, ATEC, EDCOD, uh, British Education Board, Alternative, EduWorld, uh, IDP and SIUK. So you can always approach any one of our agents who can help you with your application process. Um, and lastly, don't forget to join us on social media. I think Think if you're thinking of studying at a university in the UK, it's really important that you, you look at that social media and you start to follow them in social media for you to get a really strong sense of what, what the university community is like, what the students are saying, um, how, how the students are communicating with each other, all the different range of events that are happening on campus. So even though we are going through a very difficult period with COVID, we still have a very strong university community and we do have an awful lot of online events. We have a lot of online uh, webinars, guest lectures um, available and so following us on social media helps you get a really strong flavour of what it's like to study with us. So I very much hope that that has provided you with a good overview of the university. I know there are some uh, questions coming through in the chat, which I will try to answer as well, particularly around scholarships. So just to say again, scholarships, you can only apply for one type of scholarship. We only have the International Postgraduate Scholarship, which is the £2,000 fee award programme. We don't have any half or full scholarships. We only have that one type of scholarship um, available. In terms of the applications, you can apply at any time. Um, and really, the application deadline this year is likely to be the end of August. So you have plenty of time to apply. You can apply with or without your IELTS or an English language qualification. You can apply before you have graduated. Um, in those circumstances, we will make students conditional offers. So we will we will give you an offer to say that as long as you, you get this GPA and that you get your IELTS 6.5, then you will be able to come to the university. And at that point, we would give you an unconditional offer. So, so please do um, apply even if you don't have your full documentation in place once you have made sure that we have the right program and that you, you make sure that this is this is the, a good choice for you. So you can apply anytime up until the end of um, August. Um, there are different, as I say, different GPA requirements for the different universities in Turkey. So please do contact me and I will be able to give you um, a little bit more advice about particular programs. We, um, we take students from a very broad range of backgrounds. So for the three courses presented, we are looking for students that have a related degree. If you do have an unrelated degree, but you perhaps have very strong work experience in the, in the area that you want in to, to go into, then again, it's well worth contacting us and we'll be able to provide more guidance on whether you would be eligible for the programmes. Once again, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's been a pleasure to be here with everybody. Wishing you all a lovely evening. Um, I'm going to say uh, goodbye and thank you to our presenters and I will ask them also to say their goodbyes. Bye.
Thank you, Emil. Okay. Just okay. want to clarify um, on for the SEN and the GPHN, you don't have to have a science degree. You can actually apply if you don't have an undergrad that is in science, if you wanted to take the essential nutrition access course. So you are, as long as you are got an undergraduate degree, then you can apply if you pass the SN access to nutrition course, then you can still do that. So I just wanted to clarify that email. But thanks everyone for coming. Thank you everyone. And we look forward to welcoming you to the University of Westminster soon. Thank you, everyone. Look forward to have you. Yes, thank you very much, Emily, Joanne, Aya, Georgina, and Ada for this fantastic presentation and uh, covering all of the questions. It was a really comprehensive and uh, informative webinar for the attendees. Uh, I would like to also thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. University of Westminster ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chatten paylaşılmış olan mail adreslerinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Yarınki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you again, you all. Uh, it was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hope to see you in Westminster soon.